In this section of the course, we'll dive deep and understand exactly what data types are and what variables are. But to do this, we need to understand first how computers work and how they run our applications. The centerpiece of our computer and running our application is the CPU or the Central Processing Unit or also called the microprocessor or just a processor. And you can think about it as being the brain of the computer. I'm aware that CPUs are fairly complex, but in the end, if we drill down, they only perform three tasks. They they need to retrieve some instructions, they need to execute those instructions and they need to return the results. To use an analogy, we can think about our entire computer as being one single kitchen in a restaurant. Now, if our computer is a kitchen, then the CPU is like a chef. Now, what the chef does, it, it takes the recipes, which are the instructions for the CPUs, from probably a cookbook, and the cookbook is our software that we write or applications that we run. Then the chef prepares the ingredients. Now, it means that it processes some data, some information, in our case, some ingredients that will ultimately result into some very nice dish. And last but not least, the chef needs to prepare the dish and it needs to execute certain tasks like cutting different slices of onions and things similar to that. In the end, we just get the end result, which is a lovely dish that we can consume. Similarly, the CPU just returns some output after executing a certain instruction. And to expand this analogy, we can think that all the ingredients that the chef uses need to be stored somewhere. And usually all kitchens have something like a storage space where we have all the raw ingredients. It looks a little bit messy here, but in the end we know or we see exactly that we have different types of products here that are arranged or that, or that take some place in this specific storage area. Therefore, the kitchen storage area is like our our computer hard disk where we store our data where we persist our data until we need it the next time and believe me internally hard disks can become as messy as the kitchen storage area that we have seen previously but let's go one step further right now and assume that the chef wants to cook a dish to cook a dish it needs to retrieve certain ingredients from that storage area and to place them maybe on a kitchen counter or somewhere very close where the chef itself can then easily grab those ingredients and perform some tasks with them and it would look similar to this so you see that we had this huge storage area before and from this storage area we have here only some very specific ingredients that the chef needs to cook a dish in a certain moment to go back to our analogy this kitchen area where the cook actually performs the task that it needs to perform is similar to what we know as our random access memory or simply called ram the random access memory or ram is essentially the memory that our applications are using while they are running so this is some kind of temporary storage that only retrieves and works with data that is needed just in that specific second for the application that is running. When some data is not needed anymore, it simply gets removed from the random access memory. And as you can see that the random access memory works directly with the data that needs to be used by the running applications, we can only assume or understand why it's important that computers with more RAM actually are more capable to run several different applications side by side while not having a full memory. Now that we understand exactly what the CPU does, what the hard disk does, and what the role of the random access memory is, let's go one step further and look into this concept of variables, because variables in programming are really the core building block of each application. And to discuss this, I want to come back to this example with the picture with this kitchen counter where we have different ingredients. Previously in the main storage we had some kind of like a messy storage of different ingredients but here we see that they are kind of like very very defined. For instance we have here this area which is a very very confined area where we have these ingredients and it needs a certain size to fit there. And here we have these cherry tomatoes and this is another area that is very strictly defined and here we have the tomatoes. Then we have this kind of sauce here and you see that this sauce needs kind of like a smaller place on the kitchen counter. And similar to this we have this one which is another ingredient and we have even this one. Now as you can see from here there's only so much space that we can store on, on the kitchen counter at each given point in time. And that's exactly what the random access memory is. It has limited resources. But the important thing to note here is that everything is kind of like very well organized in different areas of the counter where we know exactly where to find an ingredient. And that's exactly how our data or the data that the, uh, the applications are using is 
used or accessed via the random access memory. So let's look at this from a different perspective. Let's imagine that our random access memory or our RAM looks similar to this. So we have these different grids here and different cells. However, here we have some values only in three of these specific cells. So we have here the value then at a certain point and 40 and then true. However, right now we don't know exactly what those values actually mean for our application. And here comes where variables are very, very handy. Now, variables are nothing very complicated. They are just simply a name that our applications assign to a certain storage area in our memory where we store a certain value for a certain purpose. So we have here, for instance, string name, and we have or we see that it references the memory location that we have there where we have the name then. Similarly, we have another area and here we have a variable int age and this variable points to this location in memory where we have this value 40. So the variable, as I said, is just a name given to a certain storage area of our random access memory so that when we write our application, we know exactly what we want to work with and with what purpose. And similarly to this, we have also this third value, which is a bool and is called is married. And this should define if a certain person is married or not, and it holds the value true or false. And these are in a natural variables. However, things get a little bit more complicated because you see these strange words that we have placed here like string and then name, which only the name is the variable name and then int age where only age is the variable name and so on and so forth. And there is a very precise reason for this because this grid view is really an oversimplification where each cell has exactly the same width and height. However, in reality, when we work with variables, not all variables take in the exact same amount of storage in the application's memory. Memory. And let, let me explain you how this works. And to do this, we need to introduce this concept of data types. Now, data types are very important because they kind of like define or instruct our computer how much memory to put aside for a certain variable. So let's take first this string name and let's assume that this, this string is only D and A. So capitalize D and then A. Obviously, in computers, everything is stored in bits. So it's either or zero or one. And depending on the sequence of zero on, or ones, they have certain values or we can calculate certain values from that. This is once again an oversimplification because when we store strings, it's also important what encodings that we use. But generally, we can assume in this case that, for instance, for the letter D, we need eight bits to represent a specific letter. And you can see here how this letter would be represented in binary. And then we have this letter A and then the associated bits value for the letter A. So if we take a look at this to represent this string, which is simply a D and an A, we need 16 bits of memory. Going further to the next variable that we had previously, which is the age, which is 40 and which is of type integers. Now, integers define kind of like whole numbers in our applications. And usually integers take 32 bits by default. So even if the integer that we need to represent in a certain moment, like the integer 40, doesn't really need all the 32 bits, as long as we declare this variable as integer, the computer will allocate 32 bits for that specific integer. So generally for this variable, our computer will know that it needs to set aside 32 bits for this specific variable. Last but not least, going to the bool is married, this, hell, this holds a value of true or false. And this is represented in binary, either through a one for true or through a zero for false. And therefore, to store a bool, we just need in memory one bit. So doing a calculation, the total memory needs of our very simple application is 16 plus 32 plus one, which is a total of 49 bits. So as a summary, we can say that variables are important because they name locations in memory where we can store some values and to which we can give some logical meaning that we can reuse in our applications. While the data types for each variables are important because they instruct the computer how much memory to set aside for certain variables. In the next lesson, we'll see how we can work with variables and data types in a C-sharp application.